Amen. This year we have, uh, you know, um, one of the things I tell pastors and, and people that, that preach is three things. Say what you're going to say, say it, and then say what you said. It means uh, introduce your topic, preach your topic, then recapitulate what you said. So I'm going to recapitulate what we said this year. That's a long word for a Samoan. <laughs> but we virtually just preach four messages this year. It has brought us from January to December. We talk initially about uh, 2020, the blessing of God, and our attitude as people to the years and the days that we have. See, uh, yesterday was Christmas. The day before that was pre-Christmas. Today is post-Christmas. So what made yesterday very different? It's your attitude. Now, even though we celebrate that for the, the, the birth of the Lord, even though we know that Jesus was not born on the 25th of December, we still celebrated it. And when come New Year, we just go from Thursday to Friday. But what's going to make it different? It's the attitude that we have finished this year and we are stepping into another year. But nothing actually changed. What actually changes everything is our attitude. Our attitude to Christmas, our attitude to life, our attitude to the new year. That makes all the difference. Because our attitude determines our outlook of life. How we see life is determined by our attitude. If our attitude is terrible, then everything in life is negative. But if our attitude is great, everything in life, including the dark moments, are moments of opportunities. So our outlook on life is determined by our attitude of heart. The outflow of life, how life flows, is also determined by our attitude. If you think this church is no good, go find another church. If you think this church is great, you stay. But it's determined by our attitude, our relationships, the things that we do, our relationship to our bosses at work, to those that are under us, if we are the boss at work, our attitude changes everything. And the outflow of how we live is determined by our attitude. And the Bible says, uh, out of your heart flows. See, many people think that life flows in. Life does not flow in. People say, I go to school, I gain knowledge, and that comes in. That's fine. But life does not come in. Life goes out. And it's determined by what's inside. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water and says guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart life will flow so the outlook of life is determined by attitude the outflow of life is determined by attitude and the outcome of life is determined by our attitude our attitude to god our attitude to the work of the lord our attitude to the savior it determines the outlook it determines the outflow and it determines the outcome. Ultimately, at the end of everything, it's our attitude and what you do with Jesus that's going to matter more than anything else. And the Bible says, don't let the wealthy boast in his wealth. Don't let the mighty boast in his strength. Hallelujah. Don't let the wise boast that he's wise. If you're going to boast, boast in this that you know God. And the attitude that you have and I have. Then we talk about uh, the Beatitudes. And after we talk about the Beatitudes, we talk about Habakkuk. And then last Thursday and Friday, we talk about Christmas. And that's our whole year. That's a summary of where we've come from. And yet in that small summary, we have lived to glorify God for the last 12 months and give him honor in and through our lives and we praise him for that God's a good God hallelujah 
And in all that, there is something that is a commonality in everything that we do. It's a commodity of life that happens whether you're sick or you're healthy, whether you're broke or you're well off. It's something that everyone needs to possess to be able to govern their lives and live their lives. And that commodity, for lack of a better word, is faith. If you're supposed to live by faith, you live by faith in a storm and the calm, whether you can afford the rent or not. Whatever you and I do, we are supposed to live by faith. Now, the good thing about that is faith makes possible everything whether you live in a palace or a ghetto because faith is colorless and faith can be possessed by the wealthy and the poor by the businessman and the cleaner by a woman that is a single mother or whatever and wherever you are you are a candidate for faith and faith makes mountains lowered and make valleys raised. And when you see a man of faith and a woman of faith living their life, you actually think they don't have any problems. Because they seem to walk in a plain line. You never see them going up or going down. You see them walking and you think everything's hunky dory. No, not everything's hunky dory, whatever hunky dory means. But the reason they walk that way is because they walk by faith and not by sight. They don't lean on their own understanding, they lean on the Lord. And they don't walk according to their own knowledge, they walk according to the knowledge of the scriptures that tell us your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And faith makes common the New and the Old Testament. We divide the Old Testament and the New Testament in so many different ways. But when you walk by faith, you walk from the New to the Old and back. And it seems like you can walk that way all the time. And you're supposed to be able to do that. But faith is also, while, while faith is common and faith is quite simple, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So if you have a Bible, there's something wrong with you if you don't have faith. Because faith comes from here. Faith comes by hearing. And God has given you the treasure whereby you can live and walk by faith if you believe the Bible. If you don't believe the Bible, it's just ink on paper. But the moment you mix it with faith, it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone and anyone that believes. Now, the other thing about faith, while it's simple, it's also very complex. They tell me the, most, the, the major ingredient for a hydrogen bomb is water. And yet, when it explodes, why? Because even though water is common, when you concentrate it, even though faith is simple, it can be quite complex. But faith is also, while very, very simple and easy to gain, is very, very biased. If we use the word race, faith is racist. Because faith will only move in people that possess it. You understand what I just said? It doesn't matter who it is. 
when faith finds somebody and that's a, that it seems like God just concentrate grace and power into that person just because they exercise faith. And so Romans chapter 4 says, the reason God does things by faith is so that everything it does is done by grace. It is by faith that it might be by grace. And when you move out of faith, you move out of grace. And so when a man possesses faith, God will just bypass everybody. It's like faith is racist. Talk to Rahab. When God came to Jericho, he demolished everything in Jericho but the house of Rahab. It's like God just singled out Rahab and said, okay, why? What's the difference? Faith. They were touching him, him or everybody was touching him. And then the woman with the issue of blood touched him. And one touch of faith stopped the God of heaven and earth. I mean, how can you stop God with a touch? And yet, then Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, well, everybody's touching you. Give me a break. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. Somebody touched me because I felt virtue i felt the power flowing out and right there it seems like faith discriminated against everybody else but that woman and when you're one that walks by faith there is so much that can be accomplished merely because we walk by faith and not by sight and John the beloved said this is the victory that we have those that are born of God have overcome the world now he did not say those that are born of God are going to overcome the world he said, if you're born of God you are a world overcomer because residing in you then is world overcoming faith Are you okay? So, when God said to Habakkuk, talking about uh, the things that he was talking to Habakkuk about, God said, uh, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Now, that's an amazing thing. So when Habakkuk knew that, he said this, even though the fig tree may not blossom, there's no vine in the trees, there's, no, there's nothing in the field, there's no sheep and there's no cattle, even though all that is happening, yet I will joy in God, I'll rejoice in the God of my salvation. What is that? That is a song of faith Job said the Lord gave the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord what is that is a statement of faith hallelujah and we talk about Christmas in the last uh, couple of days that Christmas happened six miles down the road from Jerusalem, but everybody did not go there. The priests that knew did not go there. The prophetic that knew did not. The scribes did not go there. Why? Because they did not believe. The greatest event in the history of humanity up to that time, and they didn't go. It's just down the road. And yet, from miles and miles away came the magis because they saw his star in the east sometimes i wonder how many stars we need to see before we believe in god are you okay 
I normally have a message that I preach every year at the end of the year about kings going to war. <laughs> but I, I decided to rest that this year. Even because I think most of you know that message. But I still need to preach it. Because just because you had a steak yesterday does not mean you're going to throw away a steak today. Just because you had pudding yesterday does not mean you're not going to eat pudding today. And truth is the same. That you can imbibe truth over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Like one wise man said, after you wash, what happens? You're going to get stink. Then you wash again. And then you wash again. And then you wash again. After you eat, what happens? You're going to get hungry. And then you eat again. And then you eat again. When you get dressed, what's that? Nice and fresh. But then you get dressed again. Be terrible if you just wear the same clothes for the last three months. And truth is like that. Even though you know the truth, you need to keep on hearing the truth because the more you hear the truth, the more freedom you get and the more you hear the truth, your faith keeps growing because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, what am I saying then? I'm saying that we've come through a difficulty here for many, but our faith has sustained us and it's not our faith in people, it's our faith in God. And faith works best in a storm. It's nice when things are going well. Anybody can, <laughs> can dance, but it's a difficult thing to dance when the storm comes, unless you dance by faith. So if you ever look at Hebrews chapter 4, and then uh, we'll have communion. The team said to me, communion, said, we'll have it after. <laughs> and then Martin disrupted my program. I must be the only Samoan that gets a standing ovation at the end of every year. <laughs> Verse 1. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. They knew the Messiah is being born down the road. It did not profit them, but it's their Messiah. Why did it not profit them? It says, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said. So here is God promising this nation that he called his own. Everything that God had promised them. Now, the Bible is a Hebrew Bible. The only author that is a Gentile is Luke. The prophets of old are Hebrew prophets. The priesthood of old are Hebrew priests. The feasts of Passover and Tabernacles and and all the feasts that they have are Hebraic feasts. And the feasts point to Christmas. The tabernacle points to Jesus. The prophets prophesy about Jesus. The priests do their job looking to Jesus. They, they examine the lamb. They swallow the lamb in a manger and they examine the lamb when the lamb is born. And when Jesus was born, the only human being that was ever examined in the manger where the lambs are examined was Jesus Christ. He was swallowed and put in a trough in a, in a manger where lambs are examined and they examine a human baby. In a sense, 
and it was easy for the shepherds to find and it was assigned to the shepherds because the shepherds are used to examining sheep for the sacrifice so the priests the prophets everything about the law points to the one that came on christmas but this is what it says for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them but the word which they heard did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so I don't care how much you hear, how much your faith is built up, because faith is not just knowledge. Faith is knowledge that you live. It's not an intellectual, theoretical thing. Faith is knowledge that you live. The most amazing thing, and I keep telling, I don't think people get it. From Adam to Jesus, the historians call it BC. From Jesus to now, it's called AD, Anno Domini, Latin, which means the year of our Lord. The whole of history is divided by this man. What are you going to do with him at the end of your life? Why well, I heard, don't care whether you heard. I, know, I don't care what you know. Do you mix it with faith? Because until you mix it with faith, it will profit you nothing just like them. But when we mix it with faith, then we have come through <laughs> with attitudes that are great. God will train our feet to be like hinds feet, that we may walk our high hills and be comfortable in that. Why? Because we mix everything with faith. Psalm 23 is probably, arguably, the most quoted piece of writing in the history of humanity. Somewhere in the globe, Psalm 23 right now is either being sung, read, or being quoted. Now, why do people do that? And it's almost like people just quote that at the end of somebody's life, try to comfort them. Why do you quote it? Because you know it's true. Like the wealthy man who said to a, a priest, uh, my wife has passed away and, and he's been a despot and his wife has not uh, lived a life that... Uh, one could say he was calm. But then he said to the priest, I, I want to read this out for my wife's funeral. The Lord is my shepherd. And the priest said, you can't read that because he's not your shepherd. <laughs> and he's not your Lord. So you're going to be lying. But it's like people like to do that to comfort us. Why? Because ultimately... We are made in his image. He knows who we are. And we know that without him. Even if you can be the greatest atheist if you want to. A lot of atheists said, <laughs> they have a problem with people that believe in God. I mean, if they don't believe in God, just go. But don't argue about those that believe in God. Because it doesn't change them. How do you mix things with faith? As we said before, if you do, if you make a pebble over, and uh, 
I'll have to go and apologize to the chicken for the way we use the egg. <laughs> I'm just having fun. All right. So you can have all the ingredients of a pavlova, and all the ingredients are there. If you bake them that way, you're going to have a disaster. Why? Because the ingredients have to be mixed. All the knowledge you have, you may quote the Bible. There was a Welsh actor who's no longer alive. He would quote the whole Bible. Read it, quote it. I don't think he's going to heaven. He was an alcoholic and a womanizer, and he'll quote the Bible. It'll not profit you unless mixed with faith. How do you do that? You declare it. You speak it. You appropriate it. And as we come to communion, it'll profit you nothing unless it's appropriated. How do you appropriate communion? By faith. You believe that Jesus is who he said he is. That he did what he said he was going to do. Put your trust in that. Put your trust in him and what he's done. We've come through, uh, as we said, a very unstable year for many. And yet we are here today because everything, whether we are locked down or not, is determined by our attitude to him. And faith is not only an attitude. Faith is a gift from God. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as we come to the end of this year, this, the, this last Sunday of the year, whatever we've heard this year, let us, if we haven't, appropriate that by faith and move forward. Hallelujah. Like that ship that was prophesied about today, where God will part the waters and we move forward by faith, trusting in him. Hallelujah.